Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop and part 4 of the Keithley 2001 7.5 digit multimeter repair. Parts 1 to 3 are linked down below so go and have a look at them if you haven't seen them and uh, in this video I'm going to take a look at the analog board. Now I haven't actually completely finished the digital board, still got GPIB to get up and running. Um, a little bit of a delay with that because I was actually playing around with uh, another little open source project here that I'd made and that was a, a GPIB tester and basically what this does it goes in series with the GPIB connector on the back of your device then your GPIB cable plugs in here and there's a bunch of LEDs which indicate the status of every single one of the GPIB signals. Now I thought it'd be quite interesting to get this up and running and use it whilst I was testing and repairing the GPIB interface on the digital board. So I've got this up and running now so we'll take a look at that maybe in a future video. So today I'm going to start taking a look at the analog board. We're going to get the meter down onto it and let's check for short circuits etc. If you remember in the part 1 video I did actually notice a problem up in the top left hand corner here where an LM339 appeared to have some problems so I'd actually pulled that from the board um, just in ahead of going over the board with the meter checking for shorts etc. So we'll get on with that today. Now the good thing is I do actually have the donor board here so any parts that I do need hopefully I should be able to lift from here and put onto this board here. Okay so here's the power supply circuit and the primary side of the transformer. Down at the bottom left here you've got the mains switch, it's a hard switch and you've got the AC live and the AC neutral. And straight away if you follow up the AC live you'll see it doesn't go to the primary side of the transformer directly which is over here. It goes onto one of the AC sides of a bridge rectifier. The other side of the bridge rectifier, the other AC side actually comes down here goes away through some relays, more about that in a minute, and then into one side of the primary side of this transformer. The other side of that primary side then comes back to the neutral side. So effectively the bridge rectifier here is in series with the primary winding of the transformer. How can that work? Well Marco Reps did a Keithley 2001 repair on his channel and his little gem of information regarding this resistor here and this uh, FET here gave me the information that I needed in order to work out how this was working. So your live comes up here, your AC live comes up here and into one of the AC inputs on that bridge rectifier as I mentioned. Now if you imagine that none of these components here are fitted, there's no MOSFET, there's no resistor or anything connected to the positive and negatives of that bridge rectifier, then when the AC comes up on here the positive side is going to conduct onto this through this diode here and just stop there. It's not going to go any further. The negative side is going to conduct and it's going to stop at this point here as well. Nothing's going to happen. You're certainly not going to get anything coming down and along towards the primary side of that transformer. However, this resistor is the key. So you can see that this resistor here basically connects between the positive side and back onto the negative side. So with that connected, you can imagine your AC current's coming up through here it conducts down through here the positive side, goes away through this resistor and back and down through this diode and then onwards towards the primary side of the transformer and basically the opposite side for the negative going voltages. This 470 ohm resistor is basically your bootstrap resistor. It gives just enough current to flow in order to get the transformer working and to produce some sort of secondary voltages at which point a control mechanism starts up. And this is where the MOSFET and this photocoupler come into action. 
So there's a control signal that comes up here through this photocoupler and onto the gate of this MOSFET. The amount of current that flows through the MOSFET is controlled in order to regulate the primary side current and therefore the secondary side current. Now we also have some relays here that I mentioned earlier. Basically one of them takes care of the 220, 110 volt selection, basically selecting different taps on that primary winding and you've also got a high low control relay here and here and I think that's just used to enable in the extra turns required going from for instance 220 to 240 volts. So how does this 220 volt, 110 volt operation work? Well, the relay here, the main relay involved, is driven from positive relay 1 and the other side of the coil is actually grounded. So let's take a look at where this signal comes from. And here it is over here. And what you've got is another secondary winding coming into a bridge rectifier. You've basically got an LM317 producing an 8 volt supply and a MOSFET here basically controlled by a comparator. One side of the comparator here, the positive side, is basically two resistors, a voltage divider, so you've got four volts at the positive input of that comparator. The negative side of the comparator basically comes from ACL. ACL was on the first schematic I showed you, that was your AC live, that's your 240 volts live connection. So you've got a large dropper resistor here and uh, a bit of rectification, a smoothing capacitor here and I'm presuming at pin 3 you're going to get more than 4 volts when you're using 240 volts and it'll go below 4 volts when it's set to uh, 110 volt input. Therefore the output of the comparator is basically going to turn this MOSFET off and on. Therefore the relay is turned off and on. So back to the first diagram, here's that 220, 110 volt relay and you can imagine if there's some problem with the signal here coming from that other schematic driving this relay or if there's a problem with the relay itself, you could theoretically have 240 volts coming through on the 110 volt side of this primary winding here and basically over voltaging the secondary side which would in turn over voltage all of these regulators here the positive and minus 15 and the plus 5 volt regulator and these unregulated supplies they would all just go haywire so I probably think that's what's happened in this case so for the testing of the analog board I'm certainly not going to hook up the transformer what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject my own voltages here. I'm probably going to inject plus 15, minus 15 volt directly because the regulators are removed at the moment and that way I can have good control over the DC voltages powering the analog board. And then later on down the line what I can do is I can probably disconnect the secondaries on the transformer and make sure quite separately that this primary side is all working. I can simulate this control signal coming up here and that way I make as safe and as good a test as I can with the circuits involved. Okay, so let's start probing the board. So the first thing I'm going to need is a good zero volts and these are the plus and minus 15 volt regulators. This one here being the positive 15 volt the 7815 so the tab of it is zero volts and I think this is probably zero volts here as well yeah okay but we'll go with the regulator to start with so at the left hand side of the board there are some test points here plus and minus VF minus 15 positive 15 and plus 5 so let me just go down them um, looking for shorts so the minus 15 one is showing about 20 ohms. The positive 15, about the same. And about 25 ohms for the plus 5 volt. 
Well, none of them seem right. Certainly the minus 15, plus 15 and plus 5, they all seem too low. So I think we've got some shorts. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the plus and minus 15 volt regulators and also the plus 5 volt one. I think this is the plus 5 volt one here, U108. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove those regulators. I'm going to replace them, whatever I do, and we'll see what we've got after that. So that's the regulators removed. So let's go along and see if there's any short circuits. So the tab, this is the 5 volt one. Uh, 10k, that's okay. And the input, 59 meg, that's fine. The f positive 5 volt one, that's the output, 46k, that's okay. That's the input, 23 meg, that's fine. And now the minus 15 volt one, well, on a minus 15 volt regulator, your input and common pins are swapped in relation to the positive one. So this first pin is actually your common pin. And then this is the input. 2.8k and common to output, also 2.8k. So now let's look at the input to output. Across it, 2.74 ohms. Wow. Don't often see that. You usually see a short circuit to ground or something like that. I think it's a long time since I've ever seen a short circuit input to output and not down to common. Okay, so we're back to the board now. So let's go across the output of the minus 15 volt regulator and ground which is this two pins here which is one ohm wow and the same for the positive 15 volt regulator just under one ohm wow and the plus five volt regulator here 10 ohms. So looks like we've got some problems. So let me go away and dig around, see what I can find. What I'm going to do is I'll use my bench multimeter and start probing around and see where I can find the lowest value short circuit. It could be as simple as across this tantalum capacitor, which is across the output of that uh, minus 15 volt regulator, or it could be some of the ICs, etc. Who knows at this point in time. So let me go away and do that. Okay, I'm making some progress. Uh, this is the area here that the board looked a little bit burnt. That uh, LM339 had uh, looked like it uh, caused some damage to the PCB. So I removed the other three LM399s round about it. Um, just to get them out of the way. I didn't want to have any of them on the board in that same area. And then I started looking at the resistance across the minus 15 volt supply and also the positive 15 volt supply. And it was basically one ohm across the minus 15 and one ohm across the plus 15. There's a little bit of a coincidence there. So what I did was I looked on the schematic diagram and I marked all the minus 15 volt rails across the whole analog board. And then I started looking at the ICs that have got both a positive and a negative 15 volt supply. It's a little bit of a coincidence, like I said, they're both one ohm across both down to ground. And I started looking at these DG211s. Now they're analog switches. A bit of a weird symbol for an analog switch, but that's what uh, uh, Keith Lee has chosen to do on these diagrams. And the, as you can see, you've got the minus 15 volt rail there that I've highlighted, but also the 15 volt rail. Now, some of the op amps do have uh, the same thing, although some of them don't. So I started looking at the DG211s anyway, and that was them down here, one, two, there's three of them on the board. And measuring across the minus 15 volt rail, 
down to the ground pin on that DG211, it was lowest around this area compared to the other areas on the board and also across the regulator. So I've removed those three DG211s and the resistance across the minus 15 and plus 15 as now both of them have now gone to 4 ohms. That is the plus 15 volt rail as well has gone to 4 ohms. So I think I'm on the right track that there's a device or devices that have a common plus and minus 15 volt supply that's shorted internally and it's causing this. Now looking at one of the DG211s, this one here in particular, the U319, measuring the actual chip itself across the minus 15 volt rail down to ground, it's 2 ohms. So we're definitely on the right track. Okay, so what I've done now is Further to the analogue switches that are removed there, I found some other ones over on this side of the board and I've removed them as well and now we're looking at 36 ohms across the minus 15 volt supply and the plus 15 volt rail is just under 8 ohms. So we're getting there. But yep, yeah, I'm probably thinking the same thing that you are, that all the ICs are probably dead on this board. But does that really matter? No, I don't think so, because I do have the donor board, albeit who knows what's actually gone in it. But I did take another little inspection of the donor board and we look pretty clean really around most of the circuitry. The bit that's got the problem, definite signs of corrosion, is up on this pre-regulator uh, section up here. You can see the bridge rectifier, the relays, and everything else associated with it. There's that big resistor there that I pointed out earlier. And the MOSFET as well, that basically is across the resistor there. So yep, it does look like there is some weird corrosion going on so it's a little bit worrying that the donor board's got this problem here because it may have just done exactly the same. So I think whilst I've got the donor board to hand let's measure across those regulators here same fashion I was doing it on my board let's see what sort of resistances I'm getting. So this is a minus 15 volt rail here And we're getting 15 ohms. And this is the plus 15 volt rail. 66 ohms. And the 5 volt rail is over here. Uh, over 800 ohms. Well, I think that's about it for today. I did promise an update by Sunday night on my last video. So this is it. I'll just carry on. I'll just try and get those resistance values up a bit. And uh, whether I should be trying to match it to the donor board, I'm not really sure. Maybe one of those rails seems a bit low as well. Uh, or if any of you guys out there have a K2001 in bits, maybe you're repairing it, I'd be very interested to know what is your resistances across the plus and minus 15 volt and plus 5 volt regulators. Give me a ballpark to shoot for. Thanks for watching.